long time ago when the world was brand new and not quite settled, gods lived on the earth along with humans and animals. And the most beautiful goddess of all was Amaterasu, the sun goddess. And everyone loved her because she gave light to all the world. Now, Amaterasu had a brother. His name was Susano-o, the storm god. He created huge tidal waves that wiped out entire villages. And this really angered Amaterasu, the sun goddess, his sister. She was really ticked. So she went into a cave. A big boulder was rolled to seal the entrance, and the world was plunged into darkness. The humans didn't know what to do. Someone remembered there was one goddess among all the others that they could call upon for help. Her name was Ame no Uzume no Mikoto, and she was the goddess of mirth and laughter. She did a very comical and rather lewd dance and began beating on this wooden wash tub with some sticks. There was a huge commotion outside this cave entrance, and Amaterasu got a little bit jealous. So she decided to take a peek and what she saw was an image of herself reflected back in a mirror. So she was so jealous by this beautiful creature that she came out. And this is how Uzume saved the day. Uzume is known as the first dancer and the first drummer in Japanese mythology. It starts with all the experiences that hit you as you go through life. And sometimes you can communicate through words or draw it. But for a taiko player, I guess it's like, OK, I have to show you and, and, and play it for you, because I can't tell you. This is how I feel inside. And I'll just say, being a player in the group, that work that comes from the individuals who are performing it is just stronger because it's meaningful. It came out of you. It's some of your DNA is inside the song. One of the key things that's, that it represents Izume Taiko is that it's pretty much this Western, I guess Canadian, that's sort of a, this, this total meld of what the old, the ap Japanese art form of Taiko is with what is so much part of Canada, which is basically all these kind of multicultural aspects and all the different influences that we have as a country. And, and it, it, and everybody that's in the group sort of seems to bring a little bit of themselves in it as well. So it kind of brings a fresh new twist. I think it's pretty cool to be with people that are creative in such different ways. Like Bonnie has her modern dance background and has such a creative mind that when we bring it, that she brings it into the room. And Jason, just as creative musically and has some great ideas too about, you know, he's got some, some visions of how, you know, numbers and some of our music would like to be. And for myself, I just enjoy that collaboration between the two. So working with them is kind of a, it's a cool relationship. It's, I kind of, it's like a, it's a big family. This group, um, unlike most taiko groups, is very unique in that it's mostly a trio or a quartet of drummers. Whereas the average taiko group, especially the ones known from Japan, are usually, you know, in excess of 20 drummers per performance. So we have a unique um, place in the world of taiko in that there's a small number of us in the group, but uh, a real tribute to Bonnie and her creativity as an artistic director is she allows us to bring our individuality into the group. So even though it's a trio or a quartet, we each have our own voice. This is something that we have been inspired to do from, from the Japanese culture, but we're really Canadian right down to the sticks. Like we, we make our own sticks. They are called abachi, and they are um, can vary in different shapes and sizes relative to the drum that you're playing. And I believe these ones are of an oak variety, so oak's probably the strongest. 
there's a great uh, great sword master of Japan, a legend named Miyamoto Musashi, and he's claimed to be the best swordsman of all Japan and uh, undefeated uh, in combat with a sword. Well, while I was reading the book of his life, um, one of the chapters was called Two Drumsticks, and uh, it recounts the story of Musashi being out at uh, a festival outside, taking um, his young student to a festival to see, and seeing the, the taiko drummer playing on the drum himself. And at that moment, Musashi had an epiphany to stop using one sword and start fighting with two swords. When I teach taiko, I see the excitement and, you know, the, the joy that comes out of participating in an activity with a ton of other people. That there's just some kind of synthesis that happens when your beats line up, your bodies line up to all hit it at the same time. It's like magic. It's like, how did we do that? We all agreed we were gonna do this. It's so cool because you realize that we all totally cooperated to play this, this art form and we sounded good, I feel good. You know, and uh, I, I just think it, it makes everybody feel happier for the rest of the day. I just think it's a, a wonderful activity for any age, and anyone can do it. And if you just want to get better at it, you just do it more. So anyone can taiko drum. I really love that part of, of, of who we are as people. So in Azume Taiko, you'll notice we, we look different, different sizes, you know, different talents. But usually you have a grain of uh, enthusiasm and drive that, that's just, um, it's just infectious to watch. <laughs>